Hello students, welcome to Top Scholars. Today we will be discussing about the salient features of the modern periodic table. Now friends, the modern periodic table is also known as the long form of the periodic table, wherein elements are arranged in an increasing order of their atomic numbers. But friends, what do we mean by periods and groups now? Can you see these horizontal rows in the modern periodic table? Yes. These horizontal rows in the modern periodic table are called as periods, exactly. So, what are periods? Horizontal rows in the modern periodic table are called as the periods. Can you count the number of periods that we have? Yes, we have seven periods. These periods are numbered from 1 to 7. So, now friends, what are periods? Yes, horizontal rows in the modern periodic table are called as periods and there are seven periods in the modern periodic table. But friends, in exams, we are quite worried about certain questions. Questions wherein the name of the element is given to you and you need to identify the position of the element in the periodic table. Now, out of these 118 elements, how do we determine the position of that element? Don't worry, it's very, very simple. You need to just remember the atomic number. Now friends, in our exams, we are quite worried about certain questions. Questions wherein the name of the element is given to you and you need to identify the position of the element. Now out of these 118 elements, how do we identify the correct position of the element? Don't worry, it's very simple. You need to just remember the atomic number. This atomic number helps you to identify the number of shells that are present in an atom. And this number of shells helps us to determine the position of the element in a period. Let's take an example of sodium, right? What is the electronic configuration of sodium? Yes, it is 2, 8, 1. Now, as you can see here, the red dot represents the nucleus, whereas the black dots are representing the electrons. Now, as we can see here, Sodium has two electrons in the first orbit, eight electrons in the second orbit and one electron in the outermost orbit. So now can you tell me how many shells does sodium have? Yes, it has three shells. Now let's talk about magnesium. What is the electronic configuration of magnesium? Yes, it is 2, 8, 2. So now can you tell me how many shells does magnesium have? Exactly three shells again. So, as we saw here, sodium and magnesium both have three shells. That means, sodium and magnesium both belong to period number three. Now, if I talk about potassium, can you tell me potassium belongs to which period? Don't worry, let's find it out together. Potassium has how many shells? Exactly four shells. Since potassium has four shells, what is the period to which potassium belongs? Yes, it is period number 4. What about calcium, friends? How many shells are there in calcium? Yes, exactly 4 shells. That means calcium belongs to period 4. Exactly. Now, friends, if you look at the periodic table, you will notice that each period starts with elements having one electron in the outermost shell and ends with Zero group elements, that is noble gases, which have completely filled out a more shell. Let's have a look at period number one. Period number one has two elements, right? You can see hydrogen and helium, exactly. What is the number of electrons that are present in the outermost shell of hydrogen? One, exactly. And what about helium? Helium has complete outermost shell, since it is an inert gas, exactly. But is it the same for all the periods? Let's check it out. Let's talk about period number 2 now. Period number 2 has first element lithium. What is the number of electrons that is present in the outermost shell of lithium? 1 exactly. What about neon? Yes, neon is an inert gas so it has completely filled outermost shell. What about period number 3 friends? Yes, period number 3 has first element as sodium. What is the number of electron present in the outermost shell of sodium? 1 exactly. What about argon? Yes, argon again is an inert gas, noble gas, which has completely filled outermost shell. So, from this we come to know that each period in the periodic table starts with elements having one electron in the outermost shell and ends with zero group elements, that is noble gases. 
which are also called as inert gases, which basically have completely filled outermost shell, friends. Okay. Now, friends, just have a look at period number one. How many elements are there in period number one? Two elements, exactly. Which are they? Hydrogen and helium. Very good. Now, friends, as period number one has only two elements, hence, period number one is called as the shortest period. Now, let's have a look at period number two and three. How many elements are there in each of these periods? Quickly count them. Yes, eight elements. Since the second and third period have eight elements each, they are called as short periods. So, which are the short periods? Yes, second and third period. But why so? Yes, because they have eight elements each. Now, let us have a look at period number four and five. Quickly count the elements, number of elements that are present in it. Eighteen elements each, right? Hence, fourth and fifth period are called as long periods. Why long periods? Yes, because they have 18 elements each. To learn more about this topic, download Top Scholars app.